Today on Destination Polaris, we take a razor tour around the country. We kick things off with a razor that may one day bust the speed of sound. Then we catch up with the boys from UTVUnderground.net and Mad Media as they tear up the off-road world. All that and more on Destination Polaris right now. Welcome to Destination Polaris. You know, we get to travel all over the country and we see some amazing tricked out razors. But recently, we came across one razor that stood out above all the rest. It's called the Razor X. I'm actually currently the fastest razor in the world. The man behind the wheel of Razor X. Uh, it's kind of nice to be compared with the likes of Ducati and Porsche. Doug Siddons. I was just a guy, you know, out of the back of my truck with a passion and a dream and made it a reality. You may not recognize Doug, but you probably know his website, razorforums.net. Razor Forums was real small when I took it over. And uh, now we've grown it to not only the largest Razor Forum site on the web, but it's actually the largest UTV site on the web. It has about three million page views a month. So how does a guy who runs a crazy popular website have the time to build the ultimate razor? Doug's happy to tell you. I started with a 2009 Polaris Razor S. Did a, what we call the Razor X swap, lengthening the chassis about 11 inches, adding a uh, Apex motor and a turbocharger. This motor is good for about 300 horsepower right now as it sits. The first UTV with aero. The front spoiler here for added downforce. We decided to go ahead and remove the four-wheel drive this year. So we needed as much downforce and bite on the front tires as possible. Single element carbon fiber wing in the front and the two element carbon fiber wing in the rear. Both wings together are good for about a thousand pounds of downforce. Uh, aerodynamic panels, cool old school hot rod louvers just to get uh, pressure out from underneath the hood. The suspension is uh, Lone Star Racing Plus 8. This year we added Fox Racing Shocks. You can peek back here. That's the uh, nuclear power plant back there, but that's Razor X, MCX USA, 300 horsepower, turbo 2. <laughs> This thing absolutely screams. Uh, it's set up to run just about 11,000 RPMs and um, 20 pounds of boost. It sounds like a jet taking off. Just a lot of little modifications, things you don't really think about. this thing calls you know what, but where can you race it? So for the last three years I've been the only UTV racer at Pikes Peak. The Pikes Peak International Hill Climb is the second oldest motorsports race in America. It started in 1916. This year marks the 90th running of the Race to the Clouds. And the beauty of it is it's a 12 and a half mile race from 9,000 feet to 14,000 feet. And there's 156 turns. So I don't have to go that fast, I just have to keep a really, a really good average speed. My average speed was 67.4 miles an hour. I uh, was the first UTV ever to race in this race. So I, I went to the, the commission and said, hey, this is the new, the new thing. This is what everybody's buying, it's obtainable and the platform is really cool. Right, these guys put on a great show and, and ran some amazingly fast time. And so I talked to them to let me race. Be on the lookout for Doug and his Razor X at this year's race. That's if you can see it. Coming up next, we hook up with the guys from UTVUnderground.net and Mad Media and head to Utah for Rally on the Rocks. You're watching Destination Polaris. Destination Polaris is brought to you by Carlisle Tires, special tires for special purposes. 
and by Progressive Insurance. Think easier. Think progressive. This is Joey D with UTVunderground.com. We spent the year filming the Polaris Razor all over North America. We shot mud, rock, sand, and trail riding. We even went and shot some of the baddest UTV racing on the planet. Now sit down and strap in. It's time to rally on the rocks in Moab, Utah. Moab is located in eastern Utah. It has a population of about 5,000 people. It hosts a large number of tourists every year, mostly visitors to the nearby Arches and Canyonlands National Parks. What makes Moab so remarkable is the seemingly endless number of options for trail riding. And everywhere you look, there are beautiful skylines, rock outcroppings, and endless canyon views. It's made for UTV adventure. Moab is home to the third annual Rally on the Rocks event, which is a family-friendly UTV rally that spans four days and includes rides on some of the most beautiful and at times challenging trails in the state. The rally is not a competition. It's more of an educational adventure. There are over 20 seasoned trail guides and a ton of experienced drivers at the event. So it's a great place to come, even as a beginner, to learn the ins and outs of rock crawling. The Rally on the Rocks is the largest UTV rock crawling rally in the world, and we're here to see why the Polaris Razor is the number one UTV in Moab. Why Moab? Why rock crawling? It's the fastest growing segment of UTVs right now. Enthusiasts everywhere are wanting to challenge themselves more, not just by going fast or by bombing the most extensive whoop sections there are, but they want to come out and put themselves in a slow paced environment that gives them a rush like no other. And there's no better place to do it than right here in Moab. The terrain in Moab ranges from high speed, open sandy roads at the base of mountains to easy to navigate slick rock faces, and the more challenging staircase style rock climbs that need to be executed with caution. What's great about the trails out here is if you're uncomfortable with a particular challenge, there's often a bypass route to get you around the obstacle. If not, the rally guides will guide you through the obstacle and apply the use of a safety strap if necessary. This is why it's so important to pay attention to safety and your surroundings. Staying firmly buckled into your seat and wearing a helmet are critical when riding in Moab. The Polaris Razor line has exploded in popularity here in Moab over the years. Both the local UTV rental companies and many of the recreational riders are in Razors, and it's pretty clear why. The stock Razor XP900, for example, is very well suited to rock crawling. The factory-equipped long-travel suspension, high-powered ProStar motor package, and wheel-tire combo all work together to pull these machines up sheer rock faces and across large boulder beds. The all-wheel drive and low center of gravity give you a fantastic amount of control when you're trying to balance the machine slowly over tricky obstacles. We spoke to a lot of newcomers to the rally this year and the overwhelming response was that rock crawling in a UTV is thrilling. Nothing beats the rush of overcoming your fear and tackling these natural obstacles. And the more you practice, the better you get. The Polaris Razor lineup has something for everyone and they are all trail worthy. Whether you pick the smaller, more nimble 50 inch Razor 570 or 800, or you pack the whole family into the powerful Razor 4 XP900, you will not be disappointed. From the rocks to the racetrack, coming up next, we hit the track with the Polaris race team. You're watching Destination Polaris.
Destination Polaris is brought to you by Rocky Mountain ATV, your one-stop shop for parts, apparel, and accessories. And by Hatfield McCoy, where the trail riding adventure begins. Best in the Desert series includes six races spread out across Nevada and Arizona throughout the year. There are three classes of UTV racing, including the production-based Pro UTV class, the Sportsman UTV, and the DSR1 class. So whether you're new to desert racing and have a limited budget, or you're a full-blown factory-backed team, there's something for everyone. In 2012, Polaris went big with their factory-backed Jagged X team campaigning three UTVs across two classes at the Best in the Desert series. Jagged X is considered the premier team in the UTV class at Best in the Desert, accounting for a combined five championships in six years. While Jagged X always seems to be the team to beat, this year a new Polaris-powered team forged to the front of the pack. Coastal Racing's Scott Kiger and Mark Holes would find a way in the final race of the season to edge out the competition and take home the 2012 Pro UTV Championship in their Razor XP900. Works Racing started in 2001 and has been a home for professional and amateur UTV riders for the past four seasons. They now feature four classes of UTV racing from beginner to professional and are known for their unique three to 10 mile race courses that combine very fast open desert stretches with hyper-technical motocross track infields. The folks at Works typically hold nine UTV races throughout Nevada, Arizona, Utah, and Southern California from January through October. Without a doubt, Works has become the premier UTV short course racing series in the Southwest. In 2012, factory-backed Polaris driver R.J. Anderson of Walker Evans Racing competed in his first full season with Works. With multiple wins and podium finishes, it came down to the final race for the 2012 Production 1000 Season Championship. Unfortunately for R.J., a mechanical near the end of the race would rob him of his chance to hoist the big trophy in his rookie season thus allowing hard charger Ryan Piplick and his XP900 to be crowned Production 1000 champion. RJ's Polaris teammate Cody Raiders in the UTVunderground.com Razor 570 competed in the Production 700 class. Cody would dominate the season and bring home the Works Production 700 championship. The Mint 400 is the oldest and roughest off-road race in America. It's held annually just outside of Las Vegas and has been run by everyone from Parnelli Jones and Al Unser to Steve McQueen and Ivan Ironman Stewart. Currently, it is the marquee off-road race in the United States with over 350 teams representing 14 countries and 22 classes. Pre-race festivities rival the famed Baja 1000 and are held on Las Vegas' famous Fremont Street. Where else as a UTV racer can you drive your machine through historic Las Vegas, sign autographs, and give your sponsors the exposure they surely desire? The race is sanctioned by Best in the Desert and owned by the Martelli brothers, who added three UTV classes in 2012 to the grueling Nevada Marathon. The annual Mad Media produced Mint 400 television show and DVD are arguably the best off-road shows on the planet right now. And to throw UTVs in the mix is a huge step forward for the industry and UTV race teams. When examining the current state of off-road UTV racing, one thing is clear. The Polaris Razor is consistently and overwhelmingly the platform of choice for building race-winning UTVs. The combination of the vast and growing aftermarket razor parts industry combined with the thriving race fabrication market means that anyone can buy a razor and with very few modifications be racing the very next weekend. 
Polaris has proven that research and development from race programs mean better, stronger, and more capable machines right from the factory. And that is really exciting to see. Time now for this week's UTV Close-Up. I'm Steve Schiebel, and today we're talking about the all-new, hardest-working, smoothest-riding Ranger 800 midsize. The Ranger 800 midsize is powered by an 800cc Polaris engine that delivers 50 horsepower and lots of work capability. It also delivers on fun factor as it has great acceleration in our midsize chassis. Next up, let's talk suspension. The Ranger 800 midsize has class leading suspension tracks with eight full inches of McPherson strut front suspension and our legendary independent rear suspension in the back that delivers nine inches of track. The Ranger 800 midsize has a class leading towing capacity of 1,250 pounds. And from a payload standpoint, 1,000 pounds. You can put 500 pounds of that right here in the cargo box. The Ranger 800 midsize has comfortable seating for two full-size adults with lots of elbow room and leg room for comfortable operation all day long. Let's go ahead and finish up with accessory integration. The Ranger 800 midsize has a full line of Pure Polaris accessories, including bumpers, brush guards, winches, cab systems, and a host of lock and ride features for the cargo box. So there you have it. The all new, hardest working, smoothest riding Ranger 800 midsize that delivers big bore power in midsize value. Still to come, we keep things moving with a ride to the Grand Canyon. You're watching Destination Polaris. Destination Polaris is brought to you by Mad Media and UTVunderground.com, the fastest growing UTV and side-by-side -side community in the world. And by Central Boiler. We didn't invent fire, just a better way to use it. We're in Mesquite, Nevada with the world famous Wally World Adventures. We're about to embark on a 110 mile adventure from Mesquite to one of the seven natural wonders of the world, the Grand Canyon. Wally World Adventures is owned and operated by Wally Wallace, who is an expert trail guide. We left Mesquite on back roads, which is legal in Nevada, and headed up the mountain grade, heading southeast on our way towards the majestic north rim of the Grand Canyon. What we're going to do today is we're going to just, you know, we're going to see every kind of terrain change that we could possibly want, and we're going to end up at uh, the Bar 10 Ranch. Uh, on the north rim of the Grand Canyon. We invited a close group of friends with us in our adventure to the Grand Canyon. Now while we understand that this is the Polaris Razor Tour, we thought it'd only be fitting to include some Ranger XP900s on our mission to the Grand Canyon. Bill Schuler of Jagged X Racing drove his highly modified Ranger that has everything he needs for the trail, including onboard air. John Crowley of UTVGuide.net brought out his brand new 2013 Razor XP900 that he is preparing to tackle the King of the Hammers race with early in 2013. And Blake Vanderloo, who co-drives with Jagged X Racing's Brandon Schuler in their 1919 race car, brought out his 2013 Ranger, which carried all of our tools and supplies. The terrain on this trail ride ranges from dusty, fast rally roads to thicker river wash rock to fun pine forest tree runs. The views are stunning, and there is a great mixture of fast, more intense driving at times and mellow, slower paced driving to take in the vistas around you. So we arrived last night just uh, just after sunset to the Bar 10 Ranch here, uh, the beautiful north rim of the Grand Canyon in Arizona. So we're going to do about 100 miles round trip today from Bar 10 to Toro Weep Overlook on the north rim of the Grand Canyon. Toro Weep is one of the highest and narrowest points on the Grand Canyon, about 3,000 feet high. 
all the way down to the uh, Colorado River below. So it should be a really scenic, a beautiful drive. I know we go through some pine forest. So we're gonna fuel up our razors and rangers and uh, hit the trail. On the second day of our Grand Canyon adventure, we really opened our machines up and put them through the paces. Everyone in our group at one point had them pegged at top speed, and even though Bill and Blake were in Ranger XP900s, they still have a lot of fun on the trails we drove. The Bone Stock 2013 Razor XP900 that we drove handled like a dream. It was responsive and smooth in the rougher rock, and predictable and solid feeling on the fast gravel rally roads. As we approached the Toro Weep Overlook, we drove onto a fun section of slick rock that led us to the edge of the Grand Canyon. So we've made our journey from uh, Bartend Ranch all the way to the north rim of the Grand Canyon. We're here at Toro Weep Overlook. It's a beautiful sight. It's uh, one of those epic moments when you come walking up after parking your car and look over the edge and see the river down at the bottom and just try and take in the whole size of this canyon. So what's great about this trip is when you partner up with Wally World Adventures is Wally sets you up with a list of everything you need to bring and basically dials in your whole trip. It's, uh, it's you know, less than $1,000 per person to do this trip and that covers your rooms, your food, um, and meals all on the trail. It's a really affordable way to get your razor, get a group of buddies or family together and really experience the Grand Canyon. Destination Polaris. We're headed to Oregon for Dune Fest. Everyone just talks about it, like, oh, you gotta go to Dune Fest. All that and more on Destination Polaris.